We're just getting started. This fall, a woman will finally sit in the Oval Office. It's the Oval Office and House of Cards, but I'll take it. Claire Underwood certainly isn't the first female character to become president. Since at least the 20s, women have taken turns running the free world in TV and film. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. There's no question that these depictions of female presidents reflect the hope for a similar reality in this country. But even in the imagined worlds of film and TV, the glass ceiling is as present as ever. I think that women are treated differently, even if it's unintentionally. Uh, and I think that is reflected in, in, in the shows. Vice President Claire Underwood only becomes president when her husband, Frank Underwood, resigns. That as of 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, I shall resign the office of president of the United States. The same thing happens in Veep. Vice President Selena Meyer ascends to the presidency when President Stuart Hughes resigns. A lot of people don't want me to be president. And you know why. Because fundamentally, people hate women. And then, in Commander-in-Chief, Vice President Mackenzie Allen becomes president after... The president has had a stroke. What happens now, Dad? Take the oath? There's a pattern here. In many of these shows, women are not elected president, but become president by default. The same thing happens in Quantico, Prison Break, Scandal, and other shows. So what does this mean? Well, if these shows are any reflection of the real world, it suggests that Americans are just not ready for a female president-elect. In 2015, the same year Hillary Clinton announced her presidential campaign, a Pew study revealed that only four out of 10 Americans hope to see a woman president in their lifetime. And let's not get into the results of that presidential election. So the fact that many of these women were brought into power via the vice presidency suggests that men are still the true gatekeepers of power in politics. Women have to ride on their coattails. Though they hold the most powerful position in the world, fictional female presidents aren't immune to sexism. In fact, for a long time, putting a female president on screen was meant to be a joke. The whole premise of the 1964 film, Kisses for My President, is how will President Leslie McLeod's husband, Thad, deal with being the first lady? More recent portrayals of female presidents take their role a little more seriously. However, what they have to deal with day in and day out is still no joke. For the show Veep, for example, you know, Julia Louise Dreyfus's character, they were able to show that, you know, for female candidates, a lot of times there's much more of an emphasis on what they're wearing and, you know, their physical form than on their issue agenda. When President Selena Meyer is told by Mike, her director of communications, to identify as a woman in one of her speeches, she replies, I can't identify myself as a woman. People hate that. Unless we see strong, women in positions of real power in our fictional world. It continues to be difficult for the young women and the girls and, and the older women to really see themselves in those positions of power. And equally, it becomes difficult for the voters to see women in those positions of power. The ideal female president in TV or film should represent the woman that we hope to one day see in the real Oval Office.